Okay, well, the last time I did a video on my survival poncho and whatnot, it was um, Seattle wintertime in a basement, bad lighting. Now it's a sunny day with reasonably good um, light and no wind for the microphone. Unfortunately, I'm losing my voice, so we'll give this a try again. But anyway, this is the blanket that I made. It's a army wool blanket. I have uh, done a lot of grommeting in the middle, so I made a a T-shaped cut in the middle, which I reinforced both sides with nylon. Grommeted, then it's sewn shut with parachute cord, but it can be opened up so that it goes over your head and makes, you know, a good size neck hole that's comfortable. That laces down the front, most like um, many shirts. Um, on the corners, you'll see that I've reinforced with um, Kodura and then grommeted as well, all along middle and the edges. I do the same thing up the sides as well. On the back side here, it's the part that would hang on your back. You see it's extra reinforced because there is a zipper. <coughs> <coughs> so there's your zipper. It goes the entire length of one of the back. The other side has basically just some thin nylon on the back side of it. This is a full 100% wool blanket, fairly lightweight, um, but it holds, wool holds 80% of its heat when it's wet, so even if it does get wet, it's not a problem. But the back side has nylon that I have soaked in a combination of silicone bath caulking and uh, odorless mineral spirits, so it's relatively watertight. However, and you might comment that it, there's no hood on this yet. I've considered one, but I almost always carry this with me as well. And this is a German poncho, army poncho. Um, I like a couple of the features the Germans thought of that we didn't seem to. One is that there is a snap on the hood that connects to a snap there. Let's see, can you see that? There we go so that it actually tightens it down and you don't have a hole when you use it as a poncho. This also, of course, has grommets um, all along it. The grommets on this poncho line up with the grommets on that poncho. So if I layer them one on top of another, I can thread them together and make a sleeping bag out of the two that is watertight, so that acts as a bivy sack for that. Um, I have slept out and woken up in the morning with frost on me with the combination of these two as a blanket. I usually carry this on my bike, how well, these two roll up into a bed roll that goes across the handlebars of my motorcycle, whereas this is my standard foam army poncho, or army um, a mattress. It doesn't roll up, unfortunately, too, too small, but I found it to be warmer than the Thermarest and the rest of them. And on the ground, it just seems to be better as far as stopping your heat conduction to the ground. And with these three, like I said, I have slept out in weather where um, I've had to knock the frost off the top of me in the morning. So um, it's not a sub-zero setup. I have something better for that. But this is my kind of my normal everyday carry on my bike. You can see the bike over here. Nothing special, old 85 Honda Shadow. Um, what you find is, is that when you're going down the road, because I have no windshield, that it's nice to have something rolled up over the top of the front. And right about here is where my bedroll goes. Just over the top of the gauges. And it keeps the wind off me. So that will be the combination of the army blanket, the, the blanket, the hippie survival poncho, and the uh, German um, army poncho. And then on the back passenger seat here is usually where I put that foam mattress from uh, army mattress, U.S. Army mattress, and uh, I usually roll up a few things in it because it creates a back pad. So when I'm going on long drives, I have something to lean against here, and the foam makes a good backrest. But of course, when I stop, it gives me a good place to lie down and whatnot. Um, anyway, hopefully with the better light, this gives a better idea of how this thing's constructed. It's not rocket science, but it works really well. Having the space in between the wool and the nylon where I can stuff uh, leaves and grass and whatever else inside there has helped a couple of times when I've had to take it beyond uh, freezing. Um, like I said, the way it is, it works fine all the way down to freezing weather, but uh, if I want to go colder, I can stuff stuff inside there 
and add some more insulation by just jamming things in between the two layers, whatever I can find that's dry and basically finds loft and traps air. Anyway, so that's it for now and until I get my voice back and another video opportunity presents itself. God bless.